So how did Rolex become the pioneer in the watchmaking industry? If you think about what a pioneer is, a pioneer is somebody who goes into new territory that no one has ever gone before. They blaze the trail for everybody else to follow. And that's really what Rolex has done in the world of watchmaking. For the over the last hundred years, uh, they've been creating the very best products out there. When you buy a Rolex, you're not just buying the most prestigious timepiece in the world, you're buying a hundred years of watchmaking history. Now they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery, and once Rolex has created something new and exciting, there are lots of people who follow and try to imitate what Rolex does later on. But Rolex has been the originator of many of the incredible firsts that have come along in the watchmaking industry. So let's talk about what a few of those might be. First of all, in 1914, Rolex receives the world's first Class A certificate awarded to a wristwatch by the Q Observatory. Previously, only uh, precise marine chronometers had received that type of award, and that is not something you would wear on your wrist. So Rolex was able to create a timepiece small enough to be worn on the wrist and accurate enough to compete with the most accurate timepieces in the world. They were the first to do that. In 1926, Rolex was the first to create a pressure-proof wristwatch. Up until that point in time, if you had a wristwatch, you stood the chance of dust or moisture getting on the inside. So in 1926, Rolex released the Oyster, uh, which basically represented what happens with an oyster at the bottom of the ocean. It clamps down nice and tight and it's dry on the inside, and that's exactly how the movement uh, acts in a Rolex. And Rolex was the first company to create a wristwatch that was pressure-proof. In 1931, Rolex was the first to create a self-winding rotor in a wristwatch. Up until that time, uh, to keep your watch running, you had to manually wind it at some point in time. Rolex was the first to put that self-winding technology into a wristwatch so that just like today, all you got to do is put the watch on your arm and wear it. As you wear it actively, the rotor spins round and round, winds up a spring. As the spring unwinds, that's where the watch gets its energy. The same technology we use today was first used by Rolex in 1931, and they were the first company to use that type of technology. In 1945, Rolex created the very first automatic wristwatch that had the date in a window. The date would automatically change and it would appear in the window. They were the very first to do that. You know, watches today, that's the norm, but Rolex was the first to create that back in 1945. In 1953, Rolex was the first to create a wristwatch that was pressure-proof up to 300 feet. We know that as the Submariner, and we'll talk about that watch later on. But they were the first to create a watch that you could wear on your arm, and it was that waterproof. They were blazing the trail. In 1955, Rolex was the first to create a watch that would show two different time zones, and that was the GMT Master. In 1956, Rolex was the first to create a wristwatch, automatic, that showed both the day and date in a window aperture. They, once again, blazed the trail for others to follow. In 1971, Rolex created the Sea Dweller, and that was a wristwatch that was waterproof to 2,000 feet. Nobody had ever created a wristwatch that was that waterproof until that time. And even today, the Deep Sea Sea Dweller goes up to 12,000 feet and more. Uh, so, I mean, they continue to be the first to create new things in the world of watchmaking. At the end of the last century, uh, there was... Um, great thinking as to who had made the most impact in the world of watchmaking and yes you guessed it Rolex was voted by its peers to be the watch of the century they were the pioneers they led the way they were the first to do some of these incredible accomplishments and so why why would Rolex do these things well I think it really comes down to let's talk about their mission statement and why they were driven to do these things Basically, Rolex's mission statement is threefold. First of all, they want to make the very best timepiece humanly possible. So why were they the first? Why were they the pioneer? Because they're trying to make the very best timepiece possible. Over the years, Rolex would get parts from the people who made the best parts, put them together, and created a great timepiece. But in the past 25 to 30 years, Rolex made a decision to try to create everything in-house. And today, they are happy to say that every aspect of manufacturing a Rolex is done at a Rolex facility. So they can't blame anybody else for any kind of quality issues. 
Everything is done in-house on every timepiece. And that fits perfectly into their mission statement of making the best timepiece possible because they are completely in control. Secondly, they want to protect the reputation of Rolex and, and they pursue this in three areas. First of all, uh, I mentioned earlier that imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Well, Rolex is certainly a watch that is counterfeited and copied often, and Rolex pursues those counterfeiters, and they you know, take every legal action they can to try to keep those guys from putting product out there that is deceptive. So Rolex is going to protect the name of Rolex, and it's not only counterfeiters, but if Rolex technology is out there, uh, Rolex wants to be the owner of that technology. If somebody tries to uh, take that technology, they're going to protect it. Secondly, they have a very selective process for authorized dealers. And as we're recording this, right now we're going through seeing Rolex reduce the number of authorized dealers worldwide. And I don't know the exact numbers, but you know, just an example, uh, in the United States, if there were a thousand places to go by Rolex going forward, you're probably only going to see 900 places. Why did Rolex do that? They want to make sure that the reputation of the product is represented accurately, both in value and what the watch will do. So to be selected as an authorized dealer is a really big deal. We mentioned earlier about the residual impact of the Rolex name. If you carry Rolex, you're likely to carry the very best and other products since you carry the very best timepiece. So Rolex is very particular with who they do business with because they want to protect that name Rolex. And then lastly, they want to make sure, Rolex wants to make sure the watch is represented accurately at the point of sale. And that's why you're going through this training right now. We want to make sure that you have great information so that you can give your customer accurate information so that their expectation and what they end up with matches. You know, it's nothing worse than a customer to call you back a few days later and say, my watch has stopped. I took it off for two days. Why isn't it running? And no one ever explained to them, well, it's designed to be worn every day. It's an automatic movement. And they didn't know that. Our job is to make sure that they understand the product very well. One thing Rolex has done to protect the reputation uh, is their website. They have a fantastic website and customers can go there and get a great education. And a lot of times by the time the customer makes it into your store, they know more about the watch than the salesperson. So if they're talking to a salesperson, they have to have trust and confidence in that salesperson to represent the watch accurately at the point of sale. So once again, Rolex wants to do everything possible to protect the reputation of Rolex. The last part of their mission statement, Rolex really wants to make the world a better place, uh, both in the watch industry and the world in general. And today, Rolex is still a privately owned charitable trust. Uh, the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation is still in control. And basically, um, the rules that Hans Wilsdorf set down says that after we pay all our bills, the money we have, we want to give it away to certain organizations or, or, or charities. And so they contribute quite a bit of money to all kinds of different charities, including orphanages, including orological institutes, so people can learn how to do watchmaking. Their two biggest uh, philanthropy programs are the Awards for Enterprise and the Mentor for Protege Arts Initiative. Now, I don't have time to go into what those are, but I would encourage you to go to Rolex.com and there is great information on their website that will explain exactly how Rolex helps fund uh, creativity in the world today and really make the world a better place. So the Rolex mission statement, once again, make the best timepiece humanly possible protect the reputation of Rolex, and make the world a better place. And I think they do that very, very well.